Hello, my name is Clive Scott and this is part 21 of a course on Java and um, it deals with uh, non-static member classes. Uh, this is the um, second of um, um, a group of four lectures on nested classes. So I'm going to assume that um, you've already covered uh, static member classes. So you know things like um, access methods and so on. Um, as usual, I'll be going into quite a lot of detail, certainly a great deal more detail than um, you'll find in the average textbook, so um, I hope you're ready for that. Well, the question is, what are non-static member classes? And um, well, basically, they look just like um, static member classes, except they're not static. They're not implicitly or explicitly static. Now, interfaces, if you remember, are all always considered static, so we're not talking about them. Also, if you put a class inside of an interface, that class is automatically considered static. So basically, interfaces play no part in this. So you can forget about them. And um, the important thing about a non-static member class, and I'll abbreviate it like that, is that the class must always be associated with an instance of the enclosing class. Okay. Now, um, an instance of the enclosing class, of course, is not forced to be associated with an instance of the inner class, because so, it's not forced to create one, basically. You don't have to create an inner class. Um, but if you've got an inner class, you're forced to have some instance of the enclosing class linked to it. Right. Now, um, the uh, non-static member class as well has got some restrictions. Um, you're not allowed to declare any interface in it. Uh, it um, you're not allowed to have any static methods. You're not allowed to have any static initializers or any static fields, with the exception of compile time constants. Now, if you remember compile time constants are um, have got to be primitives or strings and they're known at compile time and basically it's just um, the value just gets substituted anywhere it's used so it's not really doing anything it's just sort of shorthand um, you can however inherit static methods and static fields and you can implement interfaces uh, it's just you can't declare any Now the important thing about it, of course, is that um, because it's linked to an enclosing class, um, it uses that link to enable you to access all the fields and the methods from the enclosing class, not just the static fields like you can with static uh, member classes. With non-static member classes, you can get a lot, of course, including private methods and, uh, and private fields. Uh, it can have any accessibility, uh, private, public, default or protected. And um, just to um, uh, illustrate this uh, this thing about um, uh, compile time constants, um, here in this inner class here we've got a, a, a static final field there with um, what is an int and uh, that will give a compiler error because it has not been initialized with a compile time constant. So you can't have that. Uh, you can have that, and no, that's okay because that's initialized. And of course, you can't have static methods that will give, give you a compiler error. So that's a little illustration there. Uh, well, let's illustrate things with uh, an example. Here we've got um, this class outer here, and uh, in it is this class in one and in two. Starts there and ends there. And uh, they both got this uh, method get a, which um, returns a, which is that a there. In the case of this uh, this uh, uh, non-static class, and in the case of into, it's uh, that local one there, because of course you can't directly access that from a static um, from a static class because it's um, because it's uh, an instance variable. And uh, Got this series of tests there, and um, this uh, method main here, all it does is um, just call each of these uh, um, tests in turn. Um, they're all static, that first lot anyway. 
so you can just do auto.test and um, this last one here is not static so you've got to create obviously an instance of outer and then call the test and um, the tests return either in one or in two and uh, so it just calls the get a method so let's have a look what have we got now the first one test one um, uh, there uh, dot get a so test one here um, it's going to try and return in one dot in one ref and that being static will give a compiler error when it hits it so we can't have that and uh, test two here um, it's going to call in one dot mk in one which um, it's going to attempt to return an in one but of course it can't because this is static and you can't have a static method inside of a non-static uh, nested class like that Right. Now this one's a bit more interesting. Um, in three. Now if you do that, you might think it would work, but um, it won't because you'll get an error, and the error you get will be um, saying that um, uh, non-static variable this um, cannot be referenced from a static context. And you might think that you're not using this, but um, you might say, well, where's this? I've not got this anywhere there. But in fact you have, as we will see later, but it's just not that obvious. If we compare that with um, this here, where we're uh, returning the other class, that's the in2, the static class. In fact it all works, that all works, but that doesn't. So you can see straight away that there's going to be a difference between the way you create um, the class in each case. And here, just for comparison, there's another method that works as well. This is okay also. Um, that's doing the same as this up here, but this time it's not a it's not a static method I'm doing it from. It's uh, an instance method. You can see test five and three are very similar, except it's uh, uh, from a static method there and an instance method there. And um, three and four are similar, except you're returning a static class there and an instance class there. So. Um, there's the difference and uh, we're going to see why that makes such a big difference in a minute.